So mind is empty nothingness. Whether the mind is real or unreal, it is that which is apprehended in objects of perception. So in other words, it's the, the objects of perception are, are that allow us to apprehend the mind. And in fact, you could argue that if there were no objects of perception, there would be no notion of mind. Rama. Thought is mind. There is no distinction between the two. The self that is clothed in the spiritual body is known as mind. I don't think we should take the word body here too figuratively. The self that is clothed in the spiritual body is known as mind. It is that which brings the material or physical body into existence. The self that is clothed in the spiritual body is known as mind. I suppose we're talking here about the idea of localised. We've got a sense of locality rather than some sort of formless uh, some sort of formless permeating quantum foam and um, we've got this sense of locality so perhaps that's what's meant by um, spiritual body the self that is clothed in the spiritual body is known as mind it is that which brings the material or physical body into existence ignorance samsara repetitive history, mind stuff, bondage, impurity, darkness and inertia are all synonyms. Experience alone is the mind. It is none other than the perceived. And here we're assuming that there is actually something called perception, which um, I think we can also question. Um, all we can really say is that there is experiencing going on. And I think that's maybe what the uh, spiritual body is. It's the body which knows that there is experiencing going on. There are sensations. There are what we call, these sensations are, are, are usually classified into uh, physical sensations or sensory sensations. But that's the first, that's a classification. All we can really say is there are sensations or there's experiencing going on before we split things into an experiencer, somebody who's experiencing, and objects or sensations that they're experiencing. Before we make that split, all we can really say is there's experiencing going on. And if you sit in a meditation, which sometimes is called the just sitting meditation, you just sit don't do anything except be aware be aware of what's happening there's sensations which we normally ascribe to the body there are thoughts popping up usually lots of them there might be emotional feelings going on but all you do is you be aware of them you be aware of them that's the field of experiencing This entire universe is forever non-different from the consciousness that dwells in every atom, even as an ornament is non-different from gold. An ornament is non-different from gold. This is a gold bracelet thing again. You can have gold without being a bracelet, but you can't have a bracelet without it being gold. And we're not really saying that everything is made up of the same thing. The point here is that everything is the same. Not in some sort of homogeneous way. Um, nothing's made up of anything. Um, so it's not that there's some substance, some mysterious ether, which some people think uh, makes up everything. Um, it's just that it's non-different from consciousness. 
the entire universe is forever non-different from consciousness. And that consciousness dwells in every atom. It, it, it's just saying that consciousness dwells in even a speck of sand. Just as an ornament potentially exists in gold, the object exists in the subject. But when this notion of the object is firmly rejected and removed from the subject, then consciousness alone exists without even an apparent or potential objectivity. But when this notion of the object is firmly rejected and removed from the subject, then consciousness alone exists without even an apparent or potential objectivity. Yeah, when you remove the notion of the object, the notion of an object out there, if I say, I can relate to that guitar over there as an object out there, or as something which must be here. If it's not here, how can I be experiencing it here? Um, so I remove the notion of it as an object out there, and it becomes part of the field of experiencing. which is just consciousness and there's, n there's not an apparent or even potential objectivity. When this is realised, evils like attraction and repulsion, love and hate cease in one's heart, as also the false notions of the world, you, I, etc. Even the tendency to objectify ceases. This is freedom. And I think this is what is referred to dissolution later on, the dissolution of creation. Rama asked, Holy Sir, if the object of perception is real, then it shall not cease to be. If it is unreal, then we do not see it as unreal. So how can we overcome this? So the, the aim, as, as I mentioned before, the, the aim here is for dissolution. Before liberation, we have to dissolve all notion that the world has some kind of objectivity. Uh, I, suppose, I suppose what Ram is saying here is that uh, perhaps it does have some objectivity. If the object of the perception is real, then it won't cease to be. We can't, you know, we have to, what do we do then? And he's saying that if it is unreal, then we we don't seem to see it. We don't experience it as unreal. So so how do we over, overcome this? Vasishta said, Yet, O Rama, we see that there are holy ones who have overcome this. External objects like space, etc. I suppose everything that fills space. And psychological factors like I, etc. exist only in name. In reality, neither the objective universe, nor the perceiving self, nor perception as such, nor void, nor inertness exists. Only one is, cosmic consciousness, chit. So we can't say that, that anything exists, although there must be something. There is something here and not nothing. Um, and what we're saying that is actually here is cons cons cosmic consciousness, which is known as chit in Sanskrit. Um, yeah, Stephen Batchelor, the Buddhist writer, once uh, wrote a book called Why is there something here and not nothing? In other words, why is all this here? Um, well, without going into the why of it, we can say that there is something going on. That is really all we can say, there is something going on. We don't know why there's something going on, where it's all coming from. It is an incredible mystery. Um, we can't even say that perception is going on. Perception is a result of the cognitive process which allows us to order things to make some sort of sense so that we can interact with what is going on. And uh, what is going on we can just simply refer to as cosmic consciousness. I like to just call it the field of experiencing. 
but um, I suppose the term cosmic consciousness gives it another kind of resonance.